Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will try to learn CEDA and try to implement CEDA using Apache Camel. So agenda for this video is what is CEDA? What is Camel CEDA component? And as usual, we will try to do a little workshop just to try to understand how to implement CEDA, comp CEDA using Camel component. So what is CEDA? CEDA stands for Staged Event Driven Architecture. It refers to an approach to software architecture that decomposes a complex event driven application into a set of stages connected by queues. It avoids the high overhead associated with thread based concurrency model such as locking, unlocking and polling for logs. And it decouples event and thread scheduling from application logic. So what is CEDA camel component? The CEDA camel component provides asynchronous CEDA behavior. Messages are exchanged on a blocking queue and consumers are invoked in a separate thread from the producer. So what it simply means is if you have a root, uh, it will not block the processing of that, that root because you can basically break your root and take half of the load and put it into asynchronous queue. Queues are only visible within a single camel context. This is a very important thing to note over here. If you have multiple camel context, you cannot basically invoke CEDA uh, running in another camel context. Um, so you just need to make sure your CEDA root is within the same camel context. This, cam this component does not implement any kind of persistence or recovery. What it simply means is, if you are running a CEDA route and if your system crashes, all the processing which is happening on, on, on that CEDA route, i.e. all the queues which are storing the messages which just are waiting to be processed, you will lose all those messages. If you like to have some sort of like, you know, persistence or, or recovery mechanism, you have to use uh, some sort of mess messaging system or, or JMS, right? So this is the quite important thing, thing to note over here. Um, the URI format, um, uh, you know what URI formats are in, in Camel. Everything is URI, whether you are using a consumer or you're defining a producer, everything has to be in a URI format. And the URI format for um, CEDA is CEDA colon and, and some name uh, for, for that particular um, uh, consumer or, or producer um, uh, endpoint. Okay, and there are some options which, we, which you can use and we will try to take a look a um, couple of options over there. Right, so let's just try to understand uh, through this, this diagram over here. So let's say you have a root uh, which um, using uh, some sort of JS, uh, JMS component. So your consumer is consuming from this endpoint and then you're passing through a list of processors and then at the end that maybe that you are sending to another JMS which is basically saying maybe you know these processed uh, transfers are here. The problem with this route can be Okay, if everything is good on a good day, maybe your system is performing really well. But let's say like suddenly you have a spike in your system and you're getting maybe too, too many of these transactions or something funny going on in, in these processes. Maybe these processes are connected to some external systems and those external systems are slow. So what's gonna happen is the side effect of this slow process is going to impact the entire route over here, right? So maybe your consumer will slowly um, you know, consume consume the upstream data, right? If it's connected to JMS, um, what you can simply do is, in order to overcome that that problem, you can uh, put CEDA in between. So this is how CEDA actually works. So you take a CEDA uh, root and you stick it over here. Basically, what you, what we did, if you compare from the previous screen, we broke this arrow over here. We stuck our our CEDA. Let's say if you have four or five processors, you can actually put it anywhere. So after processing one or two, uh, you know, the, the messages in, in a processor, you can maybe send it to third or fourth, and then you can say, okay, look, um, just send it to this CEDA root over here. So this is how typically visually CEDA looks like. You have your uh, consumer consuming a message. Instead of directly, you know, sending to a process or, or your inner root, you can actually send it to this CEDA based root. CEDA will take the messages, it will put it into your blocking queue and immediately return back the, the um, handler over to you. And 
internally what it will do it will employ another thread and then those threads you can have a one thread you can have a multiple threads as i said earlier like you know you can you can have the entire thread pool config configured for for cda and then those threads will start consuming data from this blocking queue and then they will start continue with the rest of the business once your processing it is finished of course you have this end uh, producer connected this is where your messages will be submitted one thing again um, we have to remember here in in the cda model the same message travels from uh, you know on the same route uh, to to the endpoint over here right if let's say if i had a processor which was sitting over here if if it had modified the message the same modified message will be traveling on my cda if cda is modifying something when i'm sending back to the 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 processor or this route the same modified message will will carry so this is a very nice way or um, very nice way of like you know breaking or making synchronous route to asynchronous for faster processing all right hope hope that's uh, clear um, let's try to do a little workshop let's say we have a problem which is saying for a given existing route for a heartbeat service when downstream system is slow then application need to ensure that it does not impact the heartbeat service performance hmm. interesting all right and it executes time consuming processes asynchronously what what we are simply saying here is that i have a heartbeat service okay which on a some sort of like you know scheduler maybe 100 millisecond 200 millisecond it's pinging my application and when it's pinging maybe i am trying to collect this um, this heartbeat and i'm doing some heavy lifting processing and sometime there is a possibility um, that processing might take some extra time and i might not be able to capture the 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 pings or heartbeats or all the you know the fast events which are coming on my consumer okay and that means my consumer will become slow so the business requirement says over here is the consumer should not be impacted by the the inner working of of the route okay if the processors or or other parts of the routes are slow i don't really care my application should just continue to work so let's try to do a workshop let's just jump to our uh, intellij okay i have created a very simple java program over here okay uh, it's it's a spring boot application um i created a cedar root over here it extends camel's root builder and i have this uh, overridden method over here configure okay let's see we have a root which is over here i have simply you know just just to just to uh, prove the point that i have a timer okay which is pinging me on every 200 millisecond okay and when it pings basically what it does in the body it sets some date it could be anything this is this is just a demo just to just to show how the cda works and uh, how we can solve the problem of like you know the inner processors when they become slower uh, you can overcome uh, of that problem so let's say i i have a very simple message which just contains a date and a date um, when the message comes i am passing on to a root called complex process as i said earlier on a good day everything just works fine so let's if i just try to run my camel application okay what i'm expecting here is that on every 200 millisecond i should be getting a ping so as you can see my pings are fairly quick you know as you can see if you can see on my screen the screen is moving quite fast like 45 you know so every second i'm getting around five printouts over here which is good okay so this program is going to run for 30 second but now let's say um there is something funny going on within our system um, and then system becomes slower so what i'm going to do over here is i'm artificially going to uh, going to put some slowness over here okay i'm saying uh for seconds you sleep for 2 seconds right let's say like i have a i have a little bit of latency or slowness in my process what is the impact of that slowness okay the business requirement says doesn't matter what happens on the route but what are we going to see here is if i run my application even though i am expecting that my pings are like you know 200 millisecond but just notice over here 
as soon as some, you know, I, I injected this artificial slowness over here. As soon as I did that, the impact is directly gone over here. My timer is not able to send messages every 200 millisecond. Okay, and that is a problem. So we are breaching our SLA over here. So if I was writing a simple Java application, I will have to, you know, put some sort of complex threading model. You know, I have to use some sort of um, threads or I have to make sure like, you know, I can offload this work using maybe some sort of blocking queues, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of boilerplate code we will have to write and then of course we will have to test it. Here comes Camel, right? What we can do is in, in Camel. So let's just go back to slide just to create a mental picture right over here. This is what we saw just now. What we are going to do now is we are going to break this arrow over here. So instead of directly carrying on, I'm going to start sending my messages to CEDA root and I'm going to connect this CEDA root to rest of the processes over here. So I'm going to create maybe let's say another root over here. All right, let's let's just do that. So instead of me directly going from here to two, I am saying, you know what? You actually go to CEDA. It's simple as that, right? And let's call it weight lifter. Nice name, right? So, and I will also, so just, just remember one thing. If I don't specify, uh, you know, this is where the options come now. If I don't put the options over here, what will happen is CEDA by default comes with a single thread. So means whatever is happening right now, that will continue to happen. So over here, I have two options. I can either specify uh, a number of threads, like, you know, I would like to have four or five threads, whatever I want to do. The second option I have is I can simply say I have like, you know, multiple consumers and what the thread pool will do at that point, whatever the default profile for my exchange is, okay, or this camel context is, it will just use the, the threading model from there. So I'm gonna do that for, for simplicity, uh, simplicity purposes at the moment. So it's called, so let's just quickly copy. This option is called multiple consumers. So I am going to put multiple consumers over here in my CEDA very simple stuff. Okay. Now what we will have to do. So we said now all the messages from this timer are going to sit this CEDA weightlifter. Now I need to connect my CEDA to direct. If you remember my previous videos, the way things work in, in Camel, you always have consumer and it targets to producer. So I have consumer, it goes to producer. Now what I need to do is now I need to catch this CEDA, I have to make, so this is a producer over here and then I have to consume the messages from this endpoint, right? So let's just copy this thing over here, okay? And say, get my messages from this CEDA and connect to this thing. Okay, let's do a little bit of formatting over here. So what I'm expecting now, I'm expecting my systems SLA or performance should go back just by adding this CEDA. Let's try to run it and see what happens in reality. Okay, so the first rule of, of Camel is, you know, the endpoints should be exactly the same. Okay, so I just need to make sure whatever I put it over here, it needs to look exactly the same over here because this is how the roots will be defined. Because otherwise what we are saying is, send it to this, this root with these options and we are saying consume from, from this root, but the options were not matching. So Camel kind of, you know, cannot correlate with, with, uh, with consumer and producer. So we just need to make sure our consumer and producers look the same. That's why it's good, always good idea to, you know, define these things in a constant so you can just reuse it. All right, let's just run the program over here. Okay, something interesting we learned just now. Right, see, wonderful. My systems SLA is back. The problem or the bottleneck which I had earlier, it's gone. My system is pinging on 200 millisecond and I still have that, you know, the sleep over here. 
no problem whatsoever. Uh, I intentionally printed the body first and then I put the delay. Okay, because what I'm saying is just to just to prove the point that the request has actually come over here. That's why I managed to print uh, the and let's say like you no know, our process some some business uh, 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 process or business workflow is happening which is taking um, a lot of time over here. Okay, so that's why I put the delay over here. But anyways, the the point is proven by using CEDA, you can make a synchronous or sync root uh, uh, and it break it to asynchronous root and you can overcome of these you know the the bottlenecks or performance issues i hope you like the video okay you can see the uh, all this code uh, i i'm gonna put the link uh, the website which i have okay so you can go uh, copy paste the code you can try to run it locally in in your machine just just play around and see how interesting uh, camel is uh, i hope you like the video thanks for your time